back in Malaga in Spain. And of course, I'm on a Renault trip. Of course, it's 28 degrees and of course, I'm still wearing my hoodie. In 1996, the Renault Scenic was launched and in 1997, it got car of the year. This has just launched and it's also just one car of the year. Difference being, we're gone from an MPV to an SUV. We're gone all electric. Today, we're gonna to have a look around the outside, the inside, and then take it out for a drive. But this could potentially be the top of my list if somebody's looking for a family SUV that is an electric. It's ticking a lot of boxes. It's got some really cool stuff in the back seat. It's got a really cool roof. It's got Google built in. Let's have a look around. So the outside of the Renault Scenic, there is no front up on top here, but you've got some nice creases going on along the bonnet. It is a very much an SUV now, very much away from the original MPV. Along the front then you've got this low, shallow headlight unit with the high-low beam module. And then you've got your daytime running light down along the side here and this rhombus front grille. This is the second time we've had the Renault Scenic on the channel, but today we're getting to drive it as well. And you've got your cooling in underneath and you've got your different trim levels and treatments here. So you've got like a textured black plastic, a striped plastic down here, your sensors, your 360 degree camera. In certain markets, it's coming in four different trims. It also comes in six different colors, a red, a blue, a white, a black, a silver, and this Alpine kind of a frosted. You can see there's a shimmer to it. But I like it. I like the shape of it. I like the size of it. I think it's super practical. What do you think? What does it remind you of? It is it all becoming a bit of a generic SUV kind of a look to everything? So these are the Alpine wheels. And they are 19, sorry, 20 inch. 235-45-19s. Comes in 19 inch as well. Comes in a number of different trims, four different trims again, depending on your market. Your charging port here on the front right hand side. So it's going to be all right to drive into a Tesla supercharger once that network is opened up in your region. On the top, um, seven kilowatt up to 22 kilowatt again, depending on your region. And then underneath, there's two different battery sizes, a 60 kilowatt hour and an 87 kilowatt hour. And the smaller battery, the fastest charging on this is uh, 120 kilowatt DC. And on the top battery, then the big battery, the 87, that is going to get you 150 kilowatt DC. So depending on the battery size, but the charging time is the same, eight, 10 to 80% in 30 minutes. You've got your glass black indicator, retractable, and then your underneath comes in two-tone options as well. So this one is the two-tone Alpine gray with the silver. So you've got the black, you've got your matte black. And you, every car comes with that sky solar bay uh, glass roof. It doesn't open up. And then you've got your gloss black B pillars. You've got your um, door handles. Now this is the flush. And then if you want to open them, that's what they'll look like when they're popped out. So easy enough to open out. You can see there's a lot of cladding down here. Not as easy to see it in the darker colors, but on the white, I might take a spin over now and have a look at the white one in a minute. So you've got textured plastic, then you've got your brushed aluminum, and then you've got your textured black, two different types. You can see it there on camera. On the top then, at the back, you've got your shark fin aerial and gloss. You can see that matte rubber line that goes all the way up, just to try and hide that roof line. So you've got the coupe swoop up, and then you've got that blacking it. So it gives it, a, it narrows it down. I'm gonna go through some of the actual sizes for you here now. Um, it's 4.47 meters long. It's 1.86 meters wide and 1.57 meters tall. The thing about it is it's got a 2.78 meter wheelbase. Those two battery sizes, the 60 kilowatt hour, the WLTP on that is a 420. WLTP, we're gonna get it in Ireland and go through those with you. And then on the 87 kilowatt hour battery, it's coming in at 620 kilometers based on that new Ampere medium platform. So we would have seen this platform at the Renault 5 launch recently. That's the small Ampere platform. It used to be known as a CMF in collaboration with Nissan. So we've got the high level brake lamp, your window wiper, very plain on the back, not a lot going on. And when these lights aren't engaged, they're white. But then when the brakes are on, it actually turns into, I'm going to turn on the uh, in, in hazard light so you can see what that looks like. And hazard light, there's a physical button. 
and so sequential on the back you can see they're there and then you've got them on the in, uh, side mirrors and then you've got them on the down low on the DRLs on the front so hazard lights one of the big things about the Renault Scenic is the size and the practicality of the boot and so we have power tail lift on the back you've got the Renault badge in Scenic and then the E-Tech electric got a hard top and then 545 liters this thing is cavernous you can see how deep it is there is supposed to be a false floor coming with it you've got tie-off points you've got the 12 volt you've got your little light you've got your uh, hanging points and it's a 40 20 40 split haven't heard about towing capability on this yet and then power tail lift down yeah it's inoffensive practical what I do like is this design feature just below that uh, sculpted rear light it's a lovely way of making it aero and breaking that airflow so let's have a seat in the back and there the doors popped open there now you can see after a while then they'll shut close in the rear the door itself it's shut itself down just want to see how low down these um, windows go let's turn it on there we go active engine we definitely don't want 21 degrees anyway i'm gonna have the fans blown away there now on the door itself might be a door lock on it what a kerfuffle yeah the door lock is on it just to get the windows down there we go how far down did they go not all the way okay tinted in the rear on the actual then the alpine where you get the blue you get this ambient light with 64 choice colors you've got your speaker in the door you've got your gloss black door handle it's a bit plasticky there's a bit of giving it then you've got your soft touch with your alpine stitching and then your lined pocket again alpine with the alpine version it's very blue you want to like the blue so you've got um two isobex in the rear that are covered which is great and those alpine seats now let's have a little look and see what's inside so you have on the back of the seats you've got somewhere to stick your phone oh. and then you also have a pocket holder in the car itself there's over 38 liters of storage behind that then you've got two usb type c's and you've got your um, air conditioning outlets it isn't tri-zone seats are really nice would you fit three adults in the back you probably would but the the best part of it is this ingenious armrest so what do we got going on here you've got access to drop this down if you want to drop it down but then you've got a um, uh, stitched soft touch cup holders and the cup holders are right out at the end so if you do sit down you can put your hand here but then if you lift this up you also have some storage in underneath here two more as well as the ones that are down over here but these guys spin around and you can have your phone in it so for your kids for watching themselves or if you want to spin the other one around as well and you can put a larger tablet back here so rather than having it on the um backs of the chairs each child or person can have their own in the back or they can share really good ingenious as they said um, and then we lock this down and then we put that back up lots of space so knee room for me i'm six foot 288 centimeters and then on my headroom loads so i'm in the headrest there and it's got a bit of a concave in it and so that's three centimeters in the middle again flat floor i've got my own headrest couple of centimeters there as well yeah good nice a lot of people are going to be interested in this car and if the price is right like all of them so that's the rear of the google google the renault scenic let's have a seat in the drivers now let's get in out of that 20 31 degrees folks and they're still in my hoodie 
a martyr. So we've got the Alpine Blue insert, we've got the um, brushed aluminium with the um, ambient lighting in it, door handle, all your switches on the door, decent glove box. And you've got a bit of glass black going on, but not too bad. Beautiful screen and this angle that you're seeing here on the speed, fashion your seat belt or switch it off. So let's put on our seat belt so you can see what it looks like. The seat belt actually has the blue lines in it for Alpine. And you can see these angles, these degrees, and it's all to do with the angle of the Renault badge. Nice. So you can see what cloud you're in, what uh, mode you're in, what comfort setting you're in. 85% battery, 514 kilometers. So this one has the larger battery, and it's WLTP of 625. When we got into it, it had 625. And so let's have a look to see what kind of a range we were getting. And we go up. And then we go over, there we go. There's a lot of whipping and changing going on to it. But this was used by other journalists today, so I don't want to give you a WLTP real world range. What we don't have is a head up display. What we do have is um, a little sticker in relation to the French fire service, so that it's involved in an accident, they know exactly how to, uh, what car it is, where the high voltage cables are. And then the, they also have access to the uh, rear battery underneath the bench that they can flood the battery with water, same as on the other other Renault Megane. And there's a switch, uh, a master switch to shut everything down. Uh, what else have we got with the steering wheel itself? We've got um, driver settings on the left hand side, on the right hand side it's audio and menu. We've got the multi-sense setting down here, it's three spoke. Behind that you've got your regenerative braking paddles. Then you've got your lights and indicators on the left hand side. Right hand side then you've got wipers, you've got your uh, park reverse neutral stock and then underneath then you've got your audio down here like all the other Renaults. Your power button is here so this is a 12 inch screen and then a 12.3 inch screen and so you have Andro or Google built in and Android Automotive it's flickering away there on camera let me see if I can get it at an angle that it's not flickering but it doesn't flicker there we go that's a bit better and so over 50 apps and it integrates into the actual the map system as well, so it tells you what percentage battery you've left. It also connects up with the weather, so it knows if the weather's going to change or affect your range. Obviously at 31 degrees today, the battery is probably a bit too hot for the battery, but there is a uh, heat pump involved with the all of the Renault Megane, or sorry, Renault Scenics. What I love is the fact that there's physical buttons. This larger screen is also coming to Ireland. We got this on the Megane launch, but when it came to Ireland, then it didn't happen. And so we definitely love to see the fact that we're getting the bigger screen or we're guaranteeing the bigger screen. So you've got your physical buttons underneath, you've got your wireless charging pad, and you've got lots of space down here, like acres of space, and you can move these uh, dividers around the place uh, if that's what you want. If I can get them back. Then you've got a cup holder, then you've got somewhere we were putting the key there, and then another large space down in here, and this moves forwards and back as well. Key, phone, what else have we got? A large glove box on the left hand drive model anyway. And then you also have the ability for the camera. We've got the solar bay panel and how this works, it's a full glass sheet. They haven't put a blind into it, but they've put opacity. It's opacifying is the terminology. And you just pull the switch back here. And what it'll do is it'll make it clear halfway. And then you can go all the way with a second push on it and so the whole windscreen now is clear and then if you want just frosted at the front you can frost just the front so you can have it clear you can have it frosted or opaque and then you can have it clear at the front frosted at the back or frosted at the front clear at the back and you can do that via the button up here or via google assistant so yeah nice very nice what other notes have I got before we take it out for a drive? Um, what do you think so far? Let me know in the comments. It's always good to get the engagement. Um, the electric motors, we're getting two different options. 125 kilowatt motor with a it's front wheel drive, with 170 horsepower, 280 newton meters of torque, and a 160 kilowatt motor giving you 220 horsepower, 300 newton meters of torque. It's a very light car for a family SUV, all electrics, 1.85 tons. Don't get me wrong, that's not super light, but comparative to some other stuff, 
it is not that heavy. French price around the 40,000 euros. What is it going to come into Ireland at with our double taxation? The steering ratio is a ratio of 12 turns. Um, and then a turning circle of 10.9 meters. So really good because I've put the wheels all the way out to the end. We've got the four levels of regen and 30 ADAS systems which we're going to do, look at now once we take it out. But yeah, I'm really impressed with it. I think it's a great all-rounder and it's ticking a lot of boxes. And that's what we're getting now with electric vehicles. Boot, range, char fast charging, Google built in. There's no compromises anymore. We just need to make sure that these prices are as in parity with combustion engine. But it's, it's a much more future-proofed car with the, the fact that you can get over-the-air updates, etc. I'll stop waffling. We'll bring it out for a drive um, and then we'll do a wrap-up. What's it like driving the Renault Scenic? So it's a push-button start. You've got your large stock at the top here. And again, it's very similar to a lot of the other electric Renaults. Same as the Megane, same as what we're seeing in the Renault 5. If you haven't already watched that video, head over to the channel and have a look at it. Nice. And we're out. Yeah, the seats in the Alpine version are lovely. We've got our indicator. That's the noise. And it's the same exit for everybody. Now, she's looking at her phone there, she doesn't hear me or see me, or maybe she does and she's not pretending to notice who I am or what I'm doing. And away we go. So yeah, we've got a couple of different drive modes and the modes are in this multi-sense. So we can go comfort, eco, sport or persona, which is individual. So we're gonna go into sport. We need to watch our speed. The suspension is not too soft. Brakes are good. We're going to keep the Skoda going. We're testing the brakes again. And we're on full regen, which brings it to a creep, but it doesn't have one pedal in it. So let's look at my normal stuff. So visibility, the fact that you have the camera, I know some people don't like it, but I think it's definitely good. What's it like without the camera? It's not bad, it is shallow though. And so hence why they put the camera into it. And that camera lens is internally and it's covered by the window wiper. Got some good gradient here now. And it is nice. It's a, that ratio, steering ratio of 12, which we talked about. It's well able for it. Yeah, it's got that pedestrian warning. And so the startup noise is Jean-Michel Jarre. The pedestrian warning has been composed by Jean-Michel Jarre. And the Alpine startup, which is slightly different, has been composed by Jean-Michel Jarre. Um, and so I think on his new album, it's been inspired by some track on his new album, the pedestrian warning noise, I believe. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely steering wheel. It's not too thick. I'm looking forward to getting this back to Ireland. Obviously in 30 degrees, it's going to perform well on the range front, WLTP. But I found that Renaults are fairly decent in their estimation. They do a very good job of uh, battery temperature management, which is what you want. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice. Suspension is good. Like it's very quiet in here and they've done a lot, another great job. They did it the same thing with the Renault Megane with regards to its um, sound insulation. They put a special sound insulation barrier in uh, between the battery and the actual body of the car itself. But even the noise insulation, are the windows? Double, no, they're not. Very smooth. Now these are smooth roads. So again, we're going to bring it back and probably do a coast to coast with it another good Renault, another good electric Renault. They've got so much experience with the Renault Zoe, big fan of it. And then the Megane, I was very, very big fan of that one, but just it was priced very high here in Ireland. Uh, and so probably didn't get the, the, the awards and the, the applause that it deserved. And it's a lovely looking car. I think this isn't going to win any style awards. It did win car of the year award, don't get me wrong, but I think that was on the practicality. Ticket all the boxes and you can see why the judges went for it. 
with the drive modes, you have to cycle through them. You can't go up or down, which is, and the knob that's on the steering wheel, hopefully this camera will pick it up. It's a, it feels like it could be a rotary dial rather than a push button. But we're in comfort now. Nice, easy going. The screen is clear. Visibility is good. The ride is good. The seats are good. I know you're going to ask me, what's the price, Derek? I'm interested. Tell me what the price is. And I can't. We don't know what it is in Ireland yet. Just have to wait for it to be here. And it will be here towards the summertime. So it will be a 242, as we say in Ireland, that reg plate. Let's go back to have a chat outside. So at the press drive, we don't have black or blue, but we do have the white. And you can see, as I was saying, the, the bloody molding in underneath really pops on this one. That's the two-tone as well with the black roof. We've already had the gray, but then we also have the red which is the base color in the UK. I don't know what, what the base color in Ireland is going to be. But I'd love to have seen the blue and I'd love to have seen the black. But that is the red. I actually like the white. With the Alpine. I like the white with the Alpine trim. I think the white and the blue would be nice. Right, time to wrap up. Hopefully you've enjoyed my look around the outside and the inside and the drive of the Renault Scenic. It's taken a lot of boxes. It's got the range, it's got the charging speed, it's got the space in the boot, it's got the space in the back. It's got Google built in, as I said at the very start of this video. Is this going to be my top recommendation for families looking to go all electric? It's definitely going to be in the top three, that's for sure. It's all down to pricing now here in Ireland. If you're watching this in the UK and other markets, you probably know already, but in Ireland, we're take a bit slower before we get it to market, just with the price changes and the competition. But recently we would have looked at the Renault E3008, this is going to be going up head to head with it. The Kia Nero EV, also very much head to head with it. The Hyundai Kona, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's a busy space. Jump into the comments and let me know what you think. And if you've liked this video, if you've gotten this far, make sure you hit a like button. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you're going to enjoy that video too.